Hello, welcome to the Cato Institute in Washington, D.C. I'm Kat Murthy. I'm the digital marketing manager here at Cato, and you are at our new media lunch, a regular series highlighting the intersection between tech, social media, and liberty. Our panelists here today will be discussing the policy and privacy concerns surrounding filming active duty police officers, as well as touching upon uh, on-body camera programs and what those could potentially do to mitigate the problems of police misconduct. Um, for those of you in our online audience and watching on C-SPAN today, our hashtag is New Media Lunch. If you would like to tweet in questions, Otherwise, for those of you in the audience, we will be taking them at the end of the panel. With no further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speaker here today, Steve Silverman. Steve is the founder and executive director of the Flex Your Rights organization, and he's also a Cato internship alum. He's the creator of the immensely popular educational movies, Busted, The Citizen's Guide to Surviving Police Encounters, and more recently, 10 Rules for Dealing with Police. In addition to self-distributing more than 35,000 DVDs, the Flex Your Rights YouTube channel has seen over 35 million views. Steve? Thank you, Kat, and I appreciate it. How many of you have seen the movie The Matrix? By a show of hands. OK, pretty much everybody. Good. So what I want to try to do is, is the same thing with you um, that happened to Neo. Do you remember when he said, I know kung fu, after they uploaded the kung fu program into his brain. Well, like I said, I want to try to do the same thing with you, but what I want is for you to say, I know how to record the police. So to do this, I've broken down this into flex your rights, five rules for recording the police. Rule number one, know the law. And the law is you have the right to openly record the police in public. You'll notice that I emphasized openly, and I'll explain why in a second. This first rule is probably the most important, but it's also the most confusing of the rules because we've all seen um, videos where uh, people are getting arrested for openly recording the police in public. And we see these you know, every day uh, of police intimidating people or even arresting people who, who do nothing more than film the police. And this is happening despite the fact that every state and federal circuit court to rule on this question has concluded that filming the police in public is First Amendment protected activity. But some of you might ask, well, what about the 12 or so states that have what are called all party consent laws that require all parties to agree to be recorded? Well, we have good news here because the courts in these states have ruled that those laws do not apply to citizens who are openly recording the police in public. So the most obvious and effective way to avoid running afoul of these all-party consent laws uh, is to use your camera like you are a reporter, not like you're a spy. So you want to be always openly recording. Some of you who know a little bit about these laws might be saying, well, wait a second. What about Massachusetts and Illinois? These are two states that have statutes on their book that make it illegal to report the police, record the police in public. Again, there's good news here. Because in 2011, the First Circuit Court of Appeals covering Massachusetts declared their law to be unconstitutional. Soon afterwards, in 2012, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals covering Illinois did the exact same thing. So those laws have been invalidated. Therefore, in the United States, Citizens always have the right to openly record the police in public. So if you're recording the police and police tell you to put your camera away, that is an unlawful order. So in this situation, I would argue that it is OK to inform the police of your law by saying something like, officer, I'm familiar with the law, but the courts have ruled that it doesn't apply to recording on-duty police. I generally don't advise. Um, in favor of educating the police about the law in other sorts of <laughs> encounters. They generally do not appreciate that. But in this situation, I think it is advisable. Rule number two, know your technology. How many of you have a, a smartphone on you right now by a show of smartphones? I think that's pretty much, pretty much most everybody here, and that is great. Um, now, how many of you who have a smartphone 
passcode protect your phone? Or actually, most of you, well, who of you uh, here does not passcode protect your phone? You shouldn't admit to that. No, it's OK. <laughs> um, but you can easily secure it by uh, installing a passcode protection. I highly recommend it. The Supreme Court recently uh, passed a very excellent ruling requiring uh, police to uh, obtain a warrant before searching your smartphone. But in the meantime, it's always a good idea to keep it locked down um, because sometimes police uh, don't get the memo right away. Um, now, how many of you have a streaming video recording app on the home screen of your smartphone? Really? We got like three, four, five? That's fantastic. Now, um, for those of you who don't have this, let me, I'm going to show you right now the benefits of keeping a streaming video app on your home screen. Right now, I'm unlocking my secret passcode. I am tapping the Bamboozer streaming video recording app. I don't, I don't work from Bamboozer, um, but right now they have the best streaming video recording app out there, and I'm now streaming you all live mm. to an off-site server. Now, the benefit of this for when you are recording the police is that if a police officer unlawfully tries to snatch, confiscate, or destroy your smartphone, what you have recorded up until that moment will be saved securely off-site. Also, if you use Bamboozer or another live streaming video uh, recording app, Bamboozer in particular has a neat feature where if you tap the sleep button, what happens is your screen goes blank. And this can be add additional security and protection for your, for your data because um, the uh, uh, passcode, it goes to sleep. But if they try to unlock it, if they turn it on, they're going to get a passcode. And of course, you're not going to give them your passcode. And they're not going to be able to get into and delete your recordings, which is an extra layer of protection. Rule number three, respond to things cops say. C-SPAN is here, so I'll just keep it as things cops say. Um, for example, cops might say, if you are, for example, recording um, an arrest that's happening, you're a witness, um, suddenly you might see a situation where one of the police officers will break off from that and will suddenly approach you and say, hey, hey, buddy, what are you doing? Well, sometimes people make the mistake of responding with something like, uh, officer, I'm, I'm recording you to make sure you're doing your job right. Or I'm recording you because I don't trust the police. <laughs> There's a better way to say this. I think um, a better way to approach this less confrontationally is to say something like, officer, I'm not interfering. I'm asserting my First Amendment right to record. You're being documented and recorded off-site. That's why it's a good idea to use a live streaming video uh, recorder. Another thing that cops might say is, hey, please stop recording me. That is against the law. And police who uh, are in you know, those 12 states with all party consent laws might actually use this misunderstanding of the law uh, in order to try to get you to, to stop recording. And in this situation, again, I think it's OK to say something like, officer, I'm familiar with the law, but the courts have ruled that the law doesn't apply to recording on-duty police. Another thing, officers might scream at you and say, hey, stand back. Get back. You're interfering. I need you to step back. A good response to this is to, is to step back. I think it's OK to, to be a little bit flexible in this situation. Say something like, officer, I'm not interfering. I'm asserting my First Amendment right to record. It's for my safety and for yours. Rule number four, do not point your camera at the police like it's a gun like this. I've seen lots of videos where people kind of get aggressive and they shove it in their face like this. I don't think it's a really good idea. I think a better way to do it, and also you can avoid that vertical video syndrome that you might see in some videos that people post online where you see the black borders and it's really ugly and it looks like you're looking at the video through like a, a crack in a door. Make sure you go horizontal. And I think it's a good idea to record like this. When you hold the phone at waist level, I think it's a lot less confrontational pose. And you can still look at the screen and get a perfectly good shot. You don't have to frame it up like a cinematographer. It's OK if you clip the officer's head in the process. But it's better than pointing your camera like a gun. And you can avoid that, that vertical video. Rule number five, final rule, prepare to be arrested. 
I've been telling you the whole time, basically, how this is perfectly legal behavior. And yet, if you are brave enough to record the police, you must look at this activity as a potential act of civil disobedience that can lead to your arrest. Now, it's troubling that citizens who are not breaking the law should prepare to be arrested. But if the officer says, shut it off or I will arrest you, you should take the officer at his or her word. At this point, it's entirely up to you if you want to continue testing the boundaries of free speech and risk arrest. You may comply by saying something like, officer, OK, I'm turning the camera off, but under protest. Or if you keep recording, brace yourself for arrest. If you're recording with Bamboozer, for example, hit the sleep button to prevent police from deleting your footage that is now stored off site. Do not physically resist. And as with any arrest, you have the right to remain silent until you speak with a lawyer. You should use this right by shutting up. Keep calm and be confident that any frivolous charges against you will almost certainly be dropped and you will have preserved video evidence of an illegal arrest that might become the basis of a potentially lucrative lawsuit. But more importantly than that, your brave stand could help change the way police treat other citizens who assert their First Amendment right to record police. So congratulations, you've all been upgraded. You now know how to record the police. Okay, thank you, Steve. Our uh, next... Our next presenter here today is Jonathan Blanks. Jonathan is a researcher